a culture of side deals in Rhode Island, maybe. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Yeah, I'm actually giggling uh, over the idea of the side deal. I mean, the interpretation you must have over that is like, yeah, well, well, of course. I, well, what do you mean? Everyone's got a, <laughs> everybody's got a side, something going on around here. I think that's more myth than anything else. But I'm talking about specifically uh, contractual addendums that aren't passed by the authority that needs to pass them, or review them at least. And that seems to be happening in Warwick, no doubt. And we've had conversations about that here. Um, and maybe East Greenwich, well, clearly East Greenwich, and the town manager there is going to explain what's happening amidst a pretty fiery election season, not only in the country and in Rhode Island, but in East Greenwich. Nice to have you aboard. Thanks for joining us on this Thursday evening. Let me just hit to a couple different bases. Let's start with a lighter note. We had a beautiful ceremony in uh, in Boston yesterday, and although that's probably an impressive girl, Donald Trump would think that was 10 million people, but uh, it was, you know, it was about, it was about a million, right, ish. Uh, Little, a little less than we've had in the past, but just think about it. The amount of championships that we've had here in the last 15 years is going to take a little bit of the edge off, but not much. By the way, uh, manager Cora got hit with a, with a can of beer allegedly thrown by some kid here in Rhode Island. Come on, man. Come on. He didn't mean to hit him. Was he trying to? Was he auditioning for a pitching job? What do you mean? Anyway, come on, guys. Uh, but you know what? With that, that many people and, and so few incidents, uh, Red Sox Nation did well. Uh, this is crazy. CNN headline here, Trump, more troops. It could be anybody's headline, by the way. Uh, listen to this argument about the border worry. As far as the caravan, which is very dangerous, you see what's been happening. As far as the caravan is concerned, our military is out. We have about 5,008. We'll go up to anywhere between 10 and 15,000 military personnel on top of Border Patrol, ICE, and everybody else at the border. Nobody's coming in. We're not allowing people to come in. It's almost as if he needs a war. He's like, like, I'm the president, i got to be ordering troops. He's putting more people at the border for a caravan that is dissipating by the minute than we have in Afghanistan right now. So for those of you who think he's responsive to your immigration concerns, by the way, your immigration concerns have been there for a long time. They used to be deep in a pile of issues comparatively for everybody, even Republicans. But all he's doing is revving his base up all across America as if this was, you'd think this was World War III. Oh, please, some perspective, please. Let's come home and talk about the latest in the governor's race. Alan Fung says he is PO'd. He literally used the term. Headline here. He's, uh, he's going to go to the Board of Elections and allege collusion between Donald, I mean, well, Donald Trump is part of the equation here. Uh, Joe Trillo, the independent candidate for governor, and Gina Raimondo and the Democratic State Committee. So, what they, do we have the mailer? Do we have a picture of the mailer? So, here's, look, this is sent out by the Democratic State Committee. It doesn't mention Gina Raimondo at all. What it does is it kind of solidifies for everybody the relationship Joe Trillo and Donald Trump have, which, you know, is pedestrian at best, but Joe was the chairman of the Trump campaign, right? It's a color brochure. So the fun campaign is saying this is this is a bump up for Joe Trillo. Now, look, if you're a Republican and you don't know that Joe Trillo was partnered up with the Trump campaign, then you weren't paying much attention. But the idea that this is collusion between Trillo and, and Raimondo is just it's silliness. Now, there may be an infraction because in-kind contributions are limited to $25,000 between the state party and a campaign. And the Raimondo campaign reported that this was $100,000 worth of mailers uh, that went out. That may be some th something that will be addressed in some kind of a final on the way. But the idea that this is a grand collusion, that Joe Trillo and Gina Raimondo are together, is, is just nuts. 
it's smart politics on the part of the Democratic State Committee to point out to Republicans who receive the mailer that Joe and Trump are together. That takes away from Alan Fung's vote. That's what he's angry about. That's just good politics or strategy or campaigning, if you will. What he's really frustrated over is that he didn't get Trillo out of this race when he should have, and he could have. Anyway, crazy. And then the latest here, real quick, uh, although it's not a quick story, the headline here continues on WPRI.com on the state representative, Kale Keeble, who um, is in somewhat of a hot water situation here with his alleged reported behavior. This has been an ongoing saga. We've had a couple of shows on it, at least in portion, and uh, Ted Nisi updated his journalism on this yesterday. We first requested an on-the-record interview with Speaker Mattiello on Friday. Tuesday night, he agreed to speak with my colleague Kim Kalunian by phone, telling her whatever happened between Keeble and Kazarian was, quote, not statehouse business. House Speaker Nick Mattiello under fire after Target 12 revealed a March 11th email in which State Rep Catherine Kazarian claimed she was sexually harassed for years by fellow lawmaker Cale Keeble. Keeble denies the allegation, but Mattiello removed him as chairman of the powerful House Judiciary Committee just 90 minutes after our report aired. Asked why he took that step when he'd known about the email for months, Mattiello told Eyewitness News, I thought that because it is now public and her desire to keep it private was frustrated that I could take the action I took. Mattiello also said he never knew of specific evidence that Kazarian was harassed. But we reached out to more than a dozen current and former lawmakers, and five of them, State Reps Carol Hagan McEntee, Edith Agello, Teresa Tanzi, and former Reps Maria Samini and Linda Finn, all say they are aware of inappropriate text messages from Keeble to Kazarian. Hagan McEntee, a South Kingstown representative, tells me, I know she has text messages. I've never seen the texts, but she's told me about them. Kazarian has declined to comment publicly on how she alleges Keeble harassed her, saying her email speaks for itself. I also talked to Providence State Representative Ray Hull, who tells me he witnessed an incident that left him concerned, recalling a dinner for legislators where Keeble was, quote, really giving Kazarian a hard time. This is a pattern of behavior. It's obviously a pattern of behavior. And as far as the texts are concerned, half the doggone General Assembly either knows about it or has seen them. Don't tell me that the Speaker of the House doesn't know about the context and the, and, and the content of these, even though he told Gene Valestenti on the WPR Morning News yesterday that he didn't know anything. Really, really, I don't. The text I don't, I going don't, back and forth. Did you see the texts? No, absolutely not. Do you know about I, them? Is there anything sexual in the texts? I, I don't know what. I, I heard there were texts. I actually, you know, I, I know, I know that. Well, I do know that they text back and forth okay. a lot. You know, it was a close friendship, so there was a, a lot of texting. I don't know what was in the text. I've never been shown text. I've never seen okay. text. Now, I've never been shown the texts, you know. I, I don't know why the speaker is digging himself a hole like this. You know, if the news comes out prior to Election Day that he, what he did understand, or the allegations are that he did understand the nature of the texts, it's only going to hurt his reelection bid. This is, this is his problem in terms of managerial stuff. Uh, he already popped Keeble from the Judiciary Committee this week, which is evidence that he knows there's a problem and knew there was a problem. He's creating more problems for himself by the I see nothing. Just be clear about it. My goodness, Speaker. Um, this song is not over for him, and it should have been over for him like that. All right. Anyway, uh, our subject for today. So you know we've had this conversation going on with the city of Warwick, right? Here's a headline about sick pay scrutiny, and uh, there's a whole side agreement saga that I'm, I'm pretty sure is being investigated by authorities, in addition to the complaints by watchdogs uh, Rob Cody and Ken Block. Uh, it's about the way sick pay is calculated, and it's a side agreement ahead of the contract, and the city council's all aflutter now because they never saw the side agreement. And reportedly it's worth perhaps, well, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars over an extended period of time of execution. It's now been suspended by the acting mayor. It's a big mess in work. Uh, go to the website, foxprovince.com, to get more on that. But Ken Block gave me a little tip that something was happening in East Greenwich and last week I spoke to the town manager of East Greenwich. East Greenwich has its own situation here uh, where Gail has figured out that there's more than a million, half a million dollars um, in problems 
because their town council didn't approve some things that have been executed uh, by the former administration. Welcome. Nice to have you. Thank you. Uh, executive summary. If someone was to ask you what is the story all about, you would say in a minute or less? I would say the story is about uh, agreements that weren't known by the public and that cost taxpayers money. And not only that, they also cost in terms of deteriorating public, public safety services. Hmm. Okay. You got that? When we come back, we'll dig in. Stay with us. on Monday night in East Greenwich, it may have happened as well. Well, it did happen. The, the, the East Greenwich town manager presented to the East Greenwich town council 11 secret side deals that were executed by the previous administration and the firefighters union. 11. So that's outrageous. It's happening in more side than one deal place. meaning they weren't ratified by the governing body that needed to ratify it. Correct. And therefore invalid in the eyes of the law. So Ken Block and Rob Cody on the Warwick situation uh, a couple of weeks ago alerted me to a meeting that happened a, mo a Monday ago, a Monday and a half ago, a week and a half ago, uh, where you presented to the town council, was it 11? Uh, it was 11. 11, uh, and I've seen the documents, it's these, these contracts or pieces of paper, addendums to agreements or new ideas that were authorized by the former town manager and whoever was on the other side, uh, namely, in, in this particular case, firefighter union head, correct, Mr. Correct. Perry? Uh, the specific ones that bother you, but in general, are all 11 damaging to the taxpayer? Didn't seem to me they no. were. No, in fact, some are not damaging at all. And they made sense. And they made sense, or they have no financial or operational effect. Got you. Uh, yet, any side agreement that comes from a foundational agreement based on a contract that the town has to ratify needs to be presented to the council for its thumbs up and those weren't, correct? Yes, and it's actually in the town's charter that any, any changes to a contract or a contract have to go in front of the council. What specifically is the firefighter issue uh, and the side agreements and what is the value of taxpayer money uh, in discussion here? So um, the issue is obviously there's two issues. There's always a financial impact and then there's an operational impact. The, the ones with the higher financial impact uh, were, it was bringing what's been called the Coventry migration. It was bringing over as lateral transfers uh, six employ six new workers. They weren't um, firefighters. They weren't, the council didn't approve their hiring. So that was not just, but the other thing that happened is that there were actually changes not only to the contract, but two side agreements. And that resulted in at least $600,000 of taxpayer money going out the door on things that it shouldn't. In what form? In, in form of either overtime um, wage payments to the firefighters or overtime payments, money, uh, salaries to the firefighters. Money that you think is overspending? It should not have been spent. It should not have been given according, the side agreements were null and void. And on top of it, there was a secret change. Well, the side agreement, we should be careful yeah. with this. Side agreements by their nature are null and void. Yes. If, if I agree with you and all right, we go and party on whatever, uh, whatever issue that we've got, but we were supposed to check with that entity over there and, it, and whatever we agree to isn't good until that entity does it. That's just because we actually do what we're doing doesn't mean that our our stuff is legitimate. But the rub is, is this is real money that was spent on these side agreements. Yes. Not ratified by the council. Not ratified. Okay. And the unwind process is what? So it's already started. Um, so when I was doing the, the, the assessment or the analysis of how much these side agreements cost, um, I found out that in actually embedded in the contract itself from one year to another was a secret change. In, in the wages. So it wasn't just the side agreements, it's also an unknown or previously un, unexposed change in how the firefighters were being, were being paid. What was the adjustment? What they did was they eliminated, they usually took four, four years to get to that top step to be the highest paid firefighter. Uh, they, they eliminated a line and they eliminated a year. So it actually took two years. Was that, be, was that intended in your mind? for the migration of the Coventry firefighters who had already been some who were veterans of their own fire department who were coming in to work for East Greenwich? 
It was uh, it was part of the strategy, absolutely, because whose strategy? It would be the uh, the union's strategy, because the this the CBA was signed in March, and so this this little secret change was actually approved of. CBA in March. is the contract. CBA is the contract was signed in March. Even though they had the list of forty eight people who could take these jobs, ready and willing, ready to go, and it was a diverse list of different ages, different sexes. Legit list. Legit list. They had thrown it out, and starting in February, they had actually started bringing in and doing interviews for the, the so-called lateral hires. Personal relationships here? President yes. has a brother that's, that's hired? So, um, President has a brother, and also uh, two former union presidents also out of the out of the six. It's hard to hide bodies coming in though. Is the council like blah, 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 of the idea that new people are coming into the build I mean into I, the I, town I, to fight fires? I mean come on. So I, from what I understand the council had just been elected. So they it takes some time to understand um, what should be what should be happening by charter, what shouldn't be happening by charter. And I, I believe they just missed it. But you would have to ask them. <sighs> Okay, we'll come back and find out what uh, the town manager's remedy is. And, you know, she's, uh, she's under fire. She's got to appear before the Ethics Commission. She'll explain that. And then there's a discrepancy on some audit modeling a contract. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, so here's a headline in a blog. You know, this is a pretty well-constructed blog. I actually bought in the idea that it might be a mainstream East Greenwich newspaper, but it's East Greenwich News by Elizabeth McNamara. She reports $800,000 difference in council and state third quarter reports go unexplained. Listen, there's a lot There's a lot being thrown at you for incompetence or CYA and blah, 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 because of this stuff that you've been bringing to the table. So you've got two major things going on. First, ex I don't know if this is major or not. Explain to me what this discrepancy is in short order if you can. So um, it's anything but major. What it is is a natural part of the counting process. So when you close a month, I mean, when you give a monthly report, it's on one day. But then after that time, you have different transactions, that money that should be in that account, expenses that should be in that, that, that period. Stuff that needs to be reconciled. Stuff that needs to be reconciled. So in anyone's checkbook, for instance, if you think you have this much money, but then you have to reconcile it, or in any town or business, when, you're, when you run a report, there's a number of what's called journal entries that come, and the accountants do it. Any of the clerks, um, accounts receivable, right. accounts So payable. you have a, a end of quarter report that's got $49.8 million or something like that, and it comes out 49. And, and do you find this to be curious that this ends up being blogged and spread and social media opined? And Obviously, there's a lack of understanding about how accounting happens. Uh, the person is a reporter, she's not an accountant. But also, it's, it's really meant to, to continue this idea that the town manager, the town finance director, the town council president are somehow in collusion and cooking the books. And, and uh, okay. anyone would just know that this is, this is... This comes on the heels, not that this is a big deal, but you know, I saw it on social media, I figured I'd throw it at you. Um, you are appearing in front of the State Ethics Commission to respond to complaints that were levied against you. Give me the, the short on that one. There are technical violations that were not done willing or knowingly. So Paperwork? Paperwork. And in terms of the reporting of, you own a company that does financial government analysis. Yes. Uh, uh, you were running the Coventry what district there? The Co Central Coventry Fire District. Right. And so as you came to first temporarily work for, was it your company that was running East Greenwich first or were you hired personally? So, uh, no, uh, my company was hired. Okay. Is it still the company that's running? As you get, you've got to be the personal town manager now. You yes. Be, then I, now I'm the town manager. Okay. So your company comes in, fixes up Centr uh, Coventry or your district there and you're doing business, and so you're going to East Greenwich, doing same. You had to file some documentation, and you messed it up, or what happened? So once I became a uh, the town manager, I had to. They sent an ethics disclosure. I had never received one in Got my it. work at Central Falls or in Central Coventry, and I put it toward two lawyers, and they both missed it. Missed specifically that a fire district is considered a municipal entity for the ethics commission. It isn't in terms of the law. 
but the fire district... Is the idea that you can't be doing two gigs at the no, same time? No, not at all. It's just that um, this little had to be disclosed. But of course, everybody knew that I was the... You couldn't hide that. I can't hide it. So it's just really a clerical error that was missed by... Uh, Yet the Ethics Commission took the complaint uh, uh, and, and it, g it gives you the need to testify or clarify. It's a hearing. Yeah. There will be a hearing where I get to put my side and of the And you don't know forth. when. I have not been notified when at all. So after here's the, the election. thing. <laughs> so you throw you can throw a headline up that says ho 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 ethics commission and you're the one now bringing a lot of these side agreements to bear as you're doing your diligence as the town manager and it seems to me it paints a political picture come Tuesday. I'm not advocating for Gail here. Mr. Perry who is the firefighter union president uh, couldn't come here this week but will come next week to respond to some of this so we like to get both sides of the story. But do you feel there's a little bit of a political game being played here? Absolutely. What is it? It is to get me out of the position that I am in. Why? What's the motive? Because they know that I continue finding things and that I have the wherewithal, the competency, the knowledge, and the strategy to, to fix things. And they don't want things to be fixed, especially when they've used, frankly, the town of East Greenwich as an ATM for the last four years. Uh, they want to keep it going. Wouldn't you? Hmm. Well, it took us to get to the end, to get to the meat, <laughs> to get to the headline, to get to the, the, yeah. the sound bite. Um, are you a political animal, or are you just somebody that you think is caught inside that? I am I'm not a political animal. I but don't you work run in for public a, finance. I, I work in public finance, and what I am is I am a protector of taxpayer money. I am outraged by the amount of money that is needlessly spent. Because if it's a dollar going needlessly into a firefighter's pocket, that's a dollar that's not spent on... You're not anti-union? Oh, absolutely not. In fact, I've, I've worked for unions. I've actually done consulting for unions. You have a good relationship with the fire chief? Yes. Uh, the fire chief, C, you can't speak for him, but does he see some of the same things you've seen? Personally, yes, absolutely. All right. I know you've got another story. I, don't, I, I only have 40 seconds here. We'll follow up next week. What's going on today? So today we are, the town is submitting a, uh, to the state court uh, injunction against the state labor uh, relations board because of a secret relationship that was exposed earlier this week and that's between a member of the board, uh, Derek Silva, and the union's law labor lawyer for East Greenwich, Elizabeth Weens. What, what, what are you alleging? 15 seconds, 20 seconds, what are you uh, alleging? There's, there's unethical conduct. Okay. Well, that's public document. Public document, yeah, and there's also um, due process constitutional is issues. Is it a side deal? It kind was of. kept. It is a form of side deal. It's something right. that's kept secret. All right. Uh, you know what? We throw that out. Those two individuals will have every right in the world to come here and talk about what uh, what is alleged there. This is going to be reported out. It's a public uh, public process. It will follow it, and we'll continue to follow with you. Appreciate right, your you. discussion. Gail Corgan, town manager. Final word, and we come back. Stay with us. By the way, uh, development in this story, uh, should some Democrats uh, take the council in East Greenwich, uh, Ms. Corrigan suggests that she won't work for them. So there'll be some political drama, perhaps, in East Greenwich next week, FYI. More on the radio, of course. And more here each night on Our State of Mind. You have a great night. Thanks for watching.